kind of funny, but what he used to do is he used to collect bits for a boat because we used to have this red little dinghy and he always kept it, kept it in the garden and he never used it at all. So it was a bit depressing, but I, I want to go sailing, but he didn't really have time to because he always had work in the way or whatever. He got run over in France. I think it was around three o'clock in the morning that he got knocked over by a car. People came to our door and he knocked on it and mum was crying and I said, mum, what's so funny? And then she stopped and she said it was not, it's not funny. And oh, and it was at breakfast. And so when I got dressed and everything afterwards, she told me and then I was quite sad. And what happened to you then? How did you feel? I felt really sad inside and I knew that I wouldn't see him again, but so. Was it hard to cope with that? Quite hard, hmm. Well, since I don't have a dad now, nobody's going to take me sailing. It's very difficult for them to find someone that they can dare to say what, what's happening to them. Difficult things in their body, nightmares, um, fears. So it's very difficult to go and tell someone that, especially if the people close to them are also grieving. At the start, on the first week, I felt quite scared, but I saw lots of other children that lost their parents. Quite a few lost their dad, and one of them lost their mum. But, but now I know that it's not just me that's lost a dad or a mum. It's like every, every other child, and some were younger than me, and I felt bad for them. Children in need, gave us £16,000, which was um, a huge help to us because that enabled us to train a set of volunteers. It's very important. We wouldn't be able to work with our, without volunteers um, and our volunteers need to be trained. Um, so without that, we probably would not be operating now. Wherever I go, I know that they've helped me for nine weeks. And but the time they've taken just for like kids like me is like awesome.